this is how this organization called government then is immoral. This organization then only knows how to solve problems through one way, a singular way, and that's through the threat of and use of violence to solve any problems versus the plurality of nonviolent solutions that you and I already share. Okay, so I guess the, what we disagree on is the, um, I, I guess I disagree on the, the role of the social contract of an anarchist society, whereas I see government as something that it can be, it can be used in a way that can serve people. It, it doesn't have to be a monolithic, exploitative um, entity. Right. So there's definitely the, the war on drugs that you mentioned earlier and how if you smoke a plant, you can be locked up with music people. That, that's absurd. Millions yeah. and millions every year. The military industrial complex, things like that. Yeah. But there's also um, genuine merits that you, you pay your taxes and... Um, you don't pay because... You, you'd say that there's, it's, money it's that's taken stolen from, from you. you right, right. right. It's, uh, there's no tax payers or tax victims, right? If a mugger, a guy comes in the alley and says, give me your wallet, you're not paying him, you're surrendering your property, mm -hmm. right, under threat of being harmed more. Um, but in anarchy, you were mentioning earlier, a social contract. There's so, no social contract in... I'm, I'm, I'm just curious, like, how would this anarchist society function like? Like, something uh, as essential as health care. Yeah, right? yeah. Right, so, like, like a, let's just uh, have the hypothetical scenario where a person that doesn't have money and they, they need health care... Uh, Obviously, we should help them and not let them die. Sure, but, yeah. But if they don't have the money, should they, should they have to pay out of pocket for their expenses, or should it be guaranteed as a right by that the, the government? All right. So there's there's three three up. different areas in which you brought up mm -hmm. rights, uh, healthcare, right, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of access and not having enough money, right. So like one area problem easy right off the bat and not having enough money is well you don't rob people who are poor, especially of nearly half their income through taxes, right? Local, city, federal, state income taxes. Uh, tariffs, imports, licenses and permits discriminate against the uh, educated poor, mm -hmm. right? Uh, everything you've been, you bought, you buy has been taxed, uh, sales tax. So right off the bat, you have money back in your, in your pockets. The second thing would be what you're discussing. You ever read uh, 1984 by George Orwell? 1984, 1984. 1984, yeah. Yeah. yeah okay. All right. So remember in, in, in the stories, we're talking about like uh, they, they rewrite history, right? Mm -hmm. And they keep rewriting, and people forget how uh, the past used to function or how it, it was at one point a long time ago, right? And that's kind of the same way what happens when you go to government schools, revision of history. They leave things out. And one of the most important things that they, have, they leave out all the time is how health insurance was provided for poor, for poor people, for migrants. So before 1960, poverty rates were declining rapidly, almost nothing. And the reason why is because all these communities started creating friendly societies. If there's anything you remember, just remember that one word, friendly society, just Google that. Mutual aid societies, fraternities, in which uh, members of the community, uh, if they were impoverished in any way, lost their job, lost their wife, lost anything, they were able to bounce back. They had health insurance, they had unemployment insurance, they had everything. Uh, doctors just came out there and, and helped all the time. Uh, they had facilities that started to being uh, erected outside of that. Um, but the last thing government wanted is that kind of independence. Because when these communities realized that, hey, we could provide our own stuff, we don't need government, government then stepped in the way in the 1960s and shut them all down. And then they said, well, that's not up to our building code and standards. Uh, you're going to have to pay like an extra $100,000 or shut it down. You're a doctor practicing, or we're going to throw out your license. And all of it got shuttered. This thing that went all across the United States, all through Europe, uh, especially in England, gone by, by, by government. They felt threatened by it, right? They don't like competition with their own versions of their own programs trying to do the same thing, right? Okay, so, um, so you think that the, the free market is a viable solution for providing these, need, these uh, the basic necessities for humans? Right, so like, uh, so like yeah, yes, yes. Because I, that's, that, that's where we disagree. Well, it, well the facts, and evidence and history has shown that it was provided voluntarily with respect to property rights. So we may disagree, but there is an enormous history that has facts and evidence to show on the contrary that it worked. So regardless of what you may say or I may say, or even if I took the opposite position, uh, you can't contest facts and evidence, right? Okay, well, I, I guess I'd counter and say that there's also a lot of facts and evidence that says that the expansion of FDR's New Deal helped a lot of people. Um, I mean, if you look at this... What, what did, what, what did uh, the FDR's New Deal do? The New Deal? It, yeah. it, it 
provided massive spending for fixing infrastructure, putting people to work. What was the problem before that? Why why did he have to put in a new deal? Because there there, there was a lot of poverty. The, the infrastructure was it was crumbling. So what what was what was it crumbling? Why was it crumbling? Yeah. Because there wasn't enough money allocated to keep it sustained. Well, what 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 caused that to occur? Uh, right, these things are just, just kind of misplaced priorities. A massive military industrial complex. A lot of the money going to have perpetual wars overseas. Well, that uh, would be tax. government then. Government does that. Businesses doesn't right, do but, wars. But right, what I, but what I'm saying is, rather than abolishing the government entirely, let's change the government so that it works for everyday people. So, so you're talking about the Great Depression era. Um, in the past, there have been many depressions. There have been at least two. Probably could say three. But they lasted like a couple of months, a year at most. The market corrected itself. The government didn't intervene at all. The only time that it lasted more than a year was when FDR himself intervened. And what ended up happening was when you increase a tariff here for cost of goods for people in competing countries to buy goods here, what are they going to do? They're going to also increase tariffs. And now it becomes a tariff war between one of another. And now what happens to the farmers here who used to have access to cheap goods in the market when now they're twice the cost, three times the cost, they can't afford any more of the equipment that they need to farm. Now they can't farm anymore, which means all the loans that they took out to farm and to build a sustainable uh, lifestyle for themselves, they start defaulting on those loans. And like a domino effect, now banks can't collect their money. And now they start going bankrupt. And that's what, what caused the Great Depression. It was not so much uh, misallocation of resources, it was government intervening in the market and exacerbating the problem by interfering what, what what people already were kind of working out beforehand. That's that's what also lost, lost long, longer than 10 years. I mean, this just sounds um, sort of analogous to what I hear um, like from people in the GOP, like, yeah. like Ted Cruz, or just any of the uh, Republicans saying that like the government is the problem. We need to uh, free the market, then we'll have a flourishing society, abolish certain programs, things like that. Um, yeah, I just think that there's a there's reasons to be concerned about that type of perspective. Yeah, and, and the great thing about it is uh, I'm an anarchist, so I'm not even further conservative Republican, or I have no uh, interest. Right, right. I understand, stuff, but right? but but you see what I'm saying? How it's how it's similar. Uh, what well, it's not similar because the Republicans kind of want to keep it at the status quo right now, right? Uh, they want to get rid of some, but the thing is, the same arguments that they provide for some. It's the same argument you can pl apply universally for all government departments and why it should not exist, right? Uh, that they exacerbate problems. Uh, so if the Republican Party had any kind well, of measure does, of success... It, does it always exacerbate problems? Yes. The only thing the government can do is continue to put Band-Aid solutions to the problems that they created in the first well, place, well, like a reform. Well, when you have something like, uh, prior to Obamacare, there were millions of uninsured people then uh, the Affordable Care Act was essentially a, a mandate that people go to the private sector. It was, it was capitalism. People go to the, the for-profit insurance companies to get their insurance, and now there are much less people that are uninsured. At gunpoint. Because if you don't pay, you will be fined. No, and well, if you don't pay that... It's not gunpoint. You, you have to pay well, a fine. Well, yeah, yeah, and what happens if you don't pay that fine? You don't pay the fine, then there's there's repercussions. But it's but, the repercussions. But the thing is, there is a gun pointed at you. There's a threat of a gun. If you do not pay, they will come and kick down your door and throw you into a cage. Wesley Snipes, three years in prison because of that. A lot of people go to prison in cages because of that because they acknowledge and see for what it is, and they refuse to surrender their property. All right. So, but you, you're talking about that. But what 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 did I just say before that? What happened before that? Healthcare was provided voluntarily and consensually for right, everyone. Right, but, but but the thing is, like, having a, a privatized system just becomes a way of perpetuating inequality. The people that already have, that that, that, that don't have um, money or the means to get healthcare, without this um, the system in place that's going to guarantee them having healthcare as a right, then their their impoverished situation. It, it's going to lead to bad outcomes. Well, the government shouldn't have impoverished them to begin with. Governments should not have got rid of the mutual aid societies that gave them cheap health insurance, unemployment insurance. Governments should not have shut down the voluntary means that all these waves of migrants came coming here, immigrants coming to the United States, and forming these uh, mutual pacts together to help each other. Governments should not have shut that down.
to not have interfered and threatened them to throw them in doctors into cages if they started to help out the poor, right? So all the government is doing now is just uh, putting fingers on the dam on the problems that it created in the first place. A reform is another way of saying that the last hundred and thousand attempts that we tried to fix this, this didn't work. Okay, so, so what would you say is your uh, biggest critique of the, the different social democracies, in, like say in Europe, that where healthcare is a right? Uh, what do you mean by, by a right, though? Because when you say something is a right... As, uh, as in you being a citizen and paying your taxes means that you, there's universal health care. Okay. Now, it is means it, that is, somebody is, must provide it to you. Right. A doctor but, must provide you health care. What I'm saying from like the, the various OECD countries, that health, health care, universal health care is a right, and the U.S. is it's behind on that deal. Like, the U.S. doesn't have that yet. Whereas other they modern, did have modern it. No, no, they already had it. They had it in uh, before the 1960s. I already told you, healthcare was provided all over the place. I, People had healthcare, I, unemployment insurance. I, that's not true. It is very true, very, it's, very it's, true, 100 percent true. It is not a lie, and you can Google this. And the next time you see me, you can throw in my face if you think it's a lie. No, no, but no, what I'm telling no, you is 100 percent true fact that people had health insurance. Well, People that, had unemployment insurance. I'd, I'd be interested in um, reading a lot more of uh, any re recommended reading readings okay, that you yeah. have. Um, yeah, but I, I just, I don't think healthcare was ever a universal right in the US. It never had to be a universal right because every, because everyone had it because of the market. It never, it never became a necessity to force doctors Everyone to provide had, it. Immigrants had health care. Poverty rates, black yes, 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 especially black people. Fraternity orders, all that stuff arrives, yes, yes. Poverty rates were like almost nothing, my friend, nothing. It was an almost an awesome era, golden age uh, for, for, for everyone. For everyone. I'm unaware of this era that you're yeah, talking this about. Yeah, is, this is like, uh, again, it's, it's 1984, man. This is stuff the government keeps away yeah, from cool. everything. Um, like, if I go to a a government school, they only told me government history, government ethics, uh, you know, government uh, stories. They won't tell you about like how the market provided some of these solutions. Like uh, one great one, the post office, for example, is monopolized. It's illegal and criminal for FedEx, UPS, or DHL to compete in the market in delivering pieces of paper. They're only allowed to deliver packages. Why? Because 100 years ago, there was a man named Lysander Spooner who saw in the Constitution that they, they can create a post office, but that doesn't give them the exclusive right. So back then it cost him two dollars and fifty cents to deliver a parcel of mail. And he said, "What? Well, I could do it better than that." And he did it faster, cheaper. Started spreading all across the East Coast. I know, mean, started growing enormous. Uh, the, the 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 business venture, government didn't like that. Sued him out of business. Went to Congress the next year, passed laws like, "Okay, we're not going to deal with that again." No one is allowed to compete. That's the same thing what happened with uh, the mutual aid societies and the friendly societies, because government's trying to put out their own uh, welfare programs. They don't want any competition. Right? They don't need anyone to show that, hey, the market could do it better than us, because then people are going to say, well, we don't need government. That's the last thing they need people to see. Um, and that's pretty much what happens with, with everything that government has monopolized. At one point in the past, it was provided privately, voluntarily, consensual, respect for no. property rights. No, I'd say I, I, I do agree with what you're saying, and that um, there, there's, certain, um, there's certain areas where the government shouldn't be involved. It doesn't make sense. Like, if you look at a Communist Russia, the, the, the communists were here. Uh, when the they had government automobiles, right? They sucked. That compared to like in the, the U.S., th there wasn't really a, a competition motive to build the best product. So the communist cars that they were just inferior to what uh, to what capitalism could bring. So I understand on that, but I think that the government should be used for basically. Providing basic sustenance for people, but but that's that's my yeah 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 I, I get that. But the thing is, before they can say I'm going to provide you anything, um, I first need to rob you of your property before I could give you property or a service or good, cool. right? So like um, like the government's going to say I'm here to protect you, right? To protect your property, first I have to rob you of your property in order for them to say I'm here to protect your property, right? So that, that kind of doesn't really make sense logically through that. Now, when you have many Supreme Court cases, like Winnebago versus Duchenne County, that have decreed in many cases saying that 
Actually, government has no obligation to protect your life, liberty, or property. None. It does not exist. That's got to throw up a lot of red flags then. Now, uh, which court case is that? Uh, Winnebago versus Tushane County. After us, give me your email address. I'm going to send you a lot of awesome information that you're okay. going to like devour and look into. Yeah, sure. Because uh, I'm, I'm a criminal justice major here, so like for me, it's like coming across this stuff. Like, why aren't you telling me this stuff, professor? Uh, um, but yeah, so there's no security. So you're forced through taxation then to pay for a service, a monopolized service, and it's, it's not provided. You have no security, right? It doesn't exist. Um, whereas in a free society, uh, you can have contracts, you can have all kinds of stuff, arbitration. You know, when you go into a, uh, to see someone to settle a dispute, it's the judge that stands up when you enter the room, right? Because you're paying for his service, not the other way around, right? Hey, sorry, you didn't kiss the, you didn't bend the knee or kiss the ring or say your honor. Contempt of court, I don't like what you're wearing. You didn't say the Pledge of Allegiance. It happens to people all the time, spend a night in a cage. Okay, so then what is the, the role of regulation under, uh, under the anarchist perspective, do you, is that something that you don't believe in? Yeah, or? yeah, no, re yeah. Regulation happens internally all the time. Like uh, eBay, you ever been on eBay or Etsy? Yeah. And you have like uh, the five star ratings, right? You see, uh -huh. a reputation is like your word is everything, right? If a product doesn't come on time, doesn't uh, you know, doesn't match the description and everything. If there's a lot of conflict disputes, people leave commentary. It's not going to get a lot of business. No one's going to patronize their services or goods. Um, but so, even eBay. So are the, are these regulations something that should just fluff? fluctuate throughout uh, just various anarchist societies. It will happen, yeah. I mean, you can also create like a rating uh, business yourself, say, you know what? Like a lot of stuff happens already, like GMO businesses saying, we don't need government to label GMO, GMOs. We have a lot of businesses voluntarily saying, yeah, test our products so we can get your accreditation, right? And so people trust accreditation, like Consumer Reports. You ever been on Consumer Reports? No, <laughs> it's like the largest, you've heard of Consumer Reports, right? No? All right, it's like the largest area in which you want to like compare products against anything. And they'll rate it like the best of the best. Um, but if, if, if it was ever found out that they took like $1,000 to provide a biased opinion of the product, their reputation ruined, ruined. Well, what about something um, as essential as like roads? Like I, me personally, I like being able to go on the road and understand that this is fortunately mine. Like this is a public road. They say that, right? It. But so, so you think that roads should be privatized? Well, provided by well, who builds roads to begin with? Not government, businesses. I have a lot of friends who build roads all the time here in Richmond. So what government does? But they are funded by public tax dollars. Right. So so that's the thing. So you don't have a choice to choose which business to to fix the roads, right? Government acts as the middleman. Then they take your property. You don't have to. You don't get to choose. Like, hey, this is a great business. I've been in the business for ten years. But, There'll but, never be a pothole. I, I think you're operating under the assumption that coercion is always something bad. Don't you think violating consent is bad? No. So, so the thing is, like, if we're going to live in a society and we pay taxes, then some of it we should have a a, a checklist of things of necessities that the public needs: roads, healthcare. But you already we already be, talked about that. Right. If. Uh, that you don't pay, it's robbed, taken from you, right? If a mugger comes here and takes $30 from you in the middle of the alley, you don't care what he spends that money on, right? If he says, hey, don't worry about it, is it okay if he says, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it $1 to a charity of your choice and keep the rest? Well, are, are the two mutually exclusive? It's, we're, we're paying, we have to pay, right? You're forced to at gunpoint. So it's theft, yeah, you have no choice. They'll come kick down your door if they find out that you have not uh, given them your, their, your property. Just like warlords do, right? Collecting tribute. Um, now, roads in the past have also used to be privatized. This is another area of history the government doesn't teach you. So roads in the past, they used to charge it by the width of your axle. It was very thin. You're creating ruts, so they charge you more. If it's very wide, you're evening, evening the groups out. They but, charge but you how all How is that less. a stable society where, where everything has to be, it has to be uh, built by like a vast network of private enterprise. That's the beauty, beauty of the market. Do you know how to make uh, something, do you know how to make a, a cigarette? No. No. Right. Do you know how to make something as simple as a pencil? But I do trust that companies that have certain regulations do know how to do it. Well, pe people regulate themselves. The consumer regulates the business. Any point of, like Netflix, a couple years ago, they tried to increase the prices overnight. Remember that? People like, cancel, click of a button, unsubscribe, I'm going to Hulu. I have to go anywhere else, please. Consumers are king. 
businesses are at the mercy of consumers. All right, they, Cal, I, I do got to run sometime, but it was nice yeah. to meet you. Um, <laughs> Pleasure, I, yeah, I, I'm yeah. interested in a reading whatever you recommend absolutely absolutely uh let me get your email address then uh and i'll send you some really really good stuff i just want to say a quick thank you to patrick smith thank you so much for your patronage and support and for those that enjoy this content and video and want to see a lot more of this come out especially during the summer check out the patron account below in the description and with that i'll see you guys at the birthday party take good care